This is Carl Moore rethinking leadership for Forbes. Today I'm delighted to speak to Neil Ashkenazy, who's a leading professor from Australia from the University of Queensland. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Carl. Neil, you've been doing some fascinating research looking at positive work cultures, which strikes me as it's always positive, but you found something actually it's not always positive. Can you tell us a bit more? Positive work cultures is actually a double-edged sword. Uh, you can have a, uh, a positive uh, work culture where everybody is uh, uh, speaking well of each other and there's, uh, there's good vibes within the organization, but there's another sort of, of, of positive culture and that's hubris. So you can have an organization where everybody thinks that they're on top of things, when everybody has a sort of false pride, when there's a, a euphoria in the, in the organization. And uh, this is not a good thing. This means that uh, people won't uh, pay attention to the errors, they won't, uh, they won't uh, engage in negative feedback, etc. So positive uh, is good, but uh, too much positive can be a bad thing. Fascinating idea that we can actually be too proud of our organization so it blinds us to our problems. Can you give us some examples to make this concrete of how this could and how it does happen? A, a well-known example is the, uh, the failure of Lehman Brothers, uh, where CEO Dick Fuld uh, was quoted as saying, uh, just before the crash, uh, we're firing on all 99 cylinders. Uh, he was geeing everybody up and making the point that this organisation is uh, on the top of the world and totally on top of everything. Everybody was lulled into a false sense of uh, security and uh, the rest is history as the saying goes. They, uh, they, they quickly went down. So this is an example of an organisation that's uh, very positive, very optimistic and uh, this leads them to, uh, to make very poor decisions. So how does an organisation know when it's too positive? How can it figure that out? It's pretty simple, really, uh, because uh, the, the, the positive that comes from real evidence, uh, if there's something out there uh, that you can point to that shows that the organisation is really achieving its targets, uh, that's going to lead to, lead to a, a positive attitude based on achievement of results. But when you've got the positive attitude that's uh, emanating essentially from, uh, from, from hope uh, or from hubris or from a false pride, uh, then you've got uh, a few problems. So uh, organisations, if they want to be uh, positive, they need to actually produce results that are going to lead them to a positive state. Uh, on the other hand, if the situation uh, calls for being negative, there's nothing wrong with being a little bit negative. Uh, so if you say, you know, we've got some real problems here, uh, we've got to uh, get, our, get our heads down, get together, and we've got to work on it. So this is a case for, uh, for a, a, a negative approach actually being the, uh, being the appropriate uh, environment. And this is, this is part of transparency in organisations.